Well, 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 how about this? It's it's back. Now, I don't know how that, that opening sound uh, sounded to the listeners as people are watching this, which is incredible that people are actually going to watch and listen to this. But how about this? The band is back together. When you heard that, and I don't, if it, if it came across jumbled and just kind of muffled, we apologize. I'll be working on that here on the on the brand new uh, website. Does that give you chills? What do you when you hear that song? What does that take you back to, Ryan Divish? Uh, when I hear that song, well, it sounded like John Fogarty was playing underwater at yeah, that point, or maybe think, in a ca- maybe in a cave from like outer Afghanistan. I think um, there's a little bit of that for sure. No, nah, it reminds me. Well, well I mean, like plug it. I mean, like my baseball radio career started with baseball's best post game show that's right uh back in the day i mean my radio crew really started with uh what is it the the high school sports show yeah we had Friday the vars- nights varsity, varsity football live varsity you were one of our live, one of yes. our correspondents on varsity football me and live. that guy from being that guy from um <laughs> The, I, what's his the guy's uh, name? Uh, was up Rex, here? Rex something. Because we Rex. called him Sexy Rexy. Um, yeah, God, Rex. I'll, I'll I'll think of his name. He was the best. Yeah, I knew more about. Uh, I knew more about like. Uh, I don't even know what he did. Was it Aberdeen and? Uh, he did and, like Mount Vernon, and he did oh, like yeah. all the all the high schools like up north, and he was oh, okay. he, he loved it. Well, okay, first of all, God, you look great. Have you been working out? Uh, no, I'm at like 200 pounds. So, I mean, well, that's a, I but ate, you look like a solid 200 pounds. Oh, I've been lifting again, but okay. that's because I have to do a lot of rehab for all the numerous injuries because I'm old. But I <laughs> ate Leo's Hawaiian barbecue <laughs> 10 times down there. Okay, 10 so, times. Okay, where are we finding you? Because you know, when we when I asked you to let's start this new venture, I was hoping maybe you take it a little serious and be professional here. And you are where are you at? It looks like you're in a prison. I'm not gonna lie. So I'm at the uh, downtown YMCA here in Tacoma. Well, oh. um, I I don't. I'm part of Tacoma's homeless population. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> How is the homeless a... population down there? Is it good? Is it about as bad it's, as it in my neighborhood? It, it, it's a little soaked right now with this okay. weather. But, okay. Um. So I don't. I got rid of my apartment, and I'm, I'm like, I'm staying with my cousin, who lives in Ording. Washington out by on a farm our family farm that when my my Japanese family moved over here from Japan we had a farm out there and so they're out I'm staying out at the farm um I don't know his wi-fi code because he's not there and then also I needed to come into Tacoma I have all my stuff in storage I don't have a coat um I don't have my vehicle my vehicle is back in Montana I'm driving a rental a Subaru Solterra oh there you go yeah god you fit um, right in yeah. So um, anyway, so I, I figured I was going to go to the Tacoma Public Library and that's under construction. So and it it looks like there's some tents out in front of that, too. So I I, I was going to get a workout in. I know the Y has good Wi-Fi. There's the UW Tacoma Y. I got freaked out because I couldn't find a parking spot. I started throwing oh. things. So I came to the UY, UW, or the downtown Y, which does have a steam oh. room. Fuck it. I, I'll tell you this. I love a good steam room. I, I'll tell you this though. What is it about old dudes walking around naked oh. in locker rooms? It is the worst thing about. I mean, like, and like gravity is not kind of men, and either. they just let it drop. I mean, oh, and it's I like know. it's it's hitting the bottom of their heels for God's sakes. Yeah, it's just terrible. So <laughs> uh, that's where I'm at. At the downtown wine to okay. we're trying to piece this together. I know you're trying to be serious, and at no, some point I'm, I'll have serious. A, not going to be serious at all. I'll have a pot. You know, I may have a podcast studio of my own. It might be in a tent in uh, yeah. a park off of MLK here in Tacoma, but yeah. we'll see. Okay, so you're home. Do we need to start? I mean, so you know, I don't have money coming in. I mean, do we? Do we? Do we try to do a GoFundMe page for you? I mean, what do we? What do we want to try to find you a place of residence? Are you looking no, I, to I, live like, somewhere? I, Are you just going to be out of a suitcase? That's the best thing. The to- <laughs> For so people no. that are watching this, you'll see the person that just <laughs> went in the background of of Divish's where Divish is doing the show. For you listeners who are dr- just driving around listening to this, uh, PuckSports.com, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you find your podcast, there is a person. And I'm not making fun of the the person in the wheelchair is like a, a motorized wheelchair just driving behind you, and I, I believe she is driven into a locker. But uh, continue. <laughs> 
So um, you, now you yeah. can't say anything. I don't want her to do anything to you. No, I'm a, I'm a little flustered by all of this too. Uh, <laughs> it's good. So what, uh, <laughs> so what happened was, is like, I uh, yeah. in, just a I change. On, yeah, yeah, just a change. You know, I well, need a change. I stay in Montana right? in the off season uh, with my girlfriend. Yeah, and I live with her. I went from like the most bachelor person you've ever met to living with my girlfriend and her two kids. They're twins. Yeah. How is that? Teenagers. Can we just stop there? How? Yeah, I mean, it's... you you have been a guy. I've known you for so long, and I'm going to be a real honest with you. Like leading up to recording this today, I've uh, I've recorded a couple of other interviews, and. um uh, for our uh, baseball opening day extravaganza, I felt more nervous about this one than I have felt about an interview in a long time. Because one, I can't remember the last time I think we've done an actual like interview. I mean, I've seen you a bunch and, you know, oh, yeah. hung out and all that, but I haven't like sat down and asked you questions. I mean, it's got to be, is it almost 10 years? I, I have no idea. I, I remember... I remember the meeting when I was, we were told we couldn't go on KJR. I was, I was in Cleveland, I believe at the yeah. time. And um, we're doing this zoom meeting and, and I exhaled and I just said, I, you know, I was not happy. I mean, and yeah. so, but I don't want to get in but, any more trouble. No, that. no, no, but we yeah. understood, you know, understood, yeah. you know, all of that. And, and that's fine. That was a decision. It, it, it was hard. I think for a lot of us there, because one, especially, I think probably more with you than anything, because it was a relationship that we cultivated on just an early, you know, uh, an early stage of, of your career when you were at a, you know, a different newspaper, you got the news tribune and, and doing high school stuff with Eric Williams. And then you, you gravitated towards baseball. And then we built up that great relationship with, you know, you, me, Ian, you know, Ian was a big part of it and, and uh, Zabrowski and all that. And so it was, so when it went away, it was sad. It was just real, yeah. real sad. And, and I always sad. looked forward to the day that we would get a chance to do this one more time. Cause I've told you a lot that you're good at this. You could do this. This could be something that, you know, a career for you because you've got the right mentality of it, which is really just curmudgeon and look at all the <laughs> bad things in life. Yeah. And I mean, like, and I, and like, that's why, you know, on your previous show, we liked it because you're, you're a favorite among, you guys are a favorite among the writers because you guys never talked about sports and you made fun <laughs> of sports. I mean, like that's, I, I don't know. I mean, like that. I, I still remember like the couple of times when I would go in and, and co-host and uh, the one time we got other coast cafe to give us cert gift certificates. Cause oh. we sent all those people. There was the day Taiwan Walker got trade, right. or they're trying to trade for Taiwan Walker, yeah. for Justin Upton. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's been some other ones, but no, it's, it's been a long time and it it's, you know, it was frustrating on our part too. Cause sure. I felt like it was fun. You know, I would come in in the off season and do some co-hosting and all that other stuff and I enjoy it, but yeah, it's 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 so weird. Like, yeah, my life has changed so much since okay. we did like interviews. I know. So that let's let's circle back to that. your life. And hey, listener, just you know, let us dance here for a little bit. We're gonna yeah. get to the baseball team and and everything else. But um, your life has changed so much because right now I think back to the Ryan I used to know to now look at you and go, I mean, you're not married, but you're essentially married. You, yeah. You're in a long relationship, you, 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 which includes a child, not of your own, but you know, like a stepchild, so to speak. And two of them, twins, two of them, two of them, twins, boy I and mean, girl. You're like a, <laughs> you're like a regular old dad now. See, look at my coffee mug. Number one, dad, you can be yeah. that too. I mean, I'm, I'm. I'm two weeks away from driving a minivan. I mean, like Tim Booth labeled me step rad and not step dad because I'm like the cool oh, guy. But yeah, I yeah. know it's, it's been a lot different, you know? So like that's, I lived there in the off season with my girlfriend. So I was yeah. thinking my rent went up. I'm like, I'm paying $2,000 a month for an apartment that I'm in less than wow. 120 days a year. It yeah. made no sense. So I put my stuff in storage, you know, kind of talk to my cousin about staying with him because you got to have a, you know, you technically have to have a residence in Washington to work for the Times. Right, so, right, right. You know, my my residence has been floating around. Um, but yeah, so it's just a weird scenario coming back and, you know, trying to figure out, like, it's all different, you know, and like, I'm like a baseball player. I'm a creature of habit. Yeah, I like the yeah, routine. Yeah. And I don't have any of my routine because I don't know where I'm living at the time. I I have like one suitcase and like a couple pairs of these jogger sweats that I swear yeah. I'd never buy, but I got them from Costco and they're really what, what kind of the, what, what kind of jogger sweats? Because I I love a good jogger sweat. They're and if good. anyone would like to sponsor this new show, PuckSports.com, uh, I'll take any endorsement from any jogger sweats company out there because they're so got, made for fat people, and I'm I'm all in. All so in. I'm wearing. 
I'm wearing the Costco specials for the like the workout ones, but I have I bought some nice ones from True Links, the golf company. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, they're the best. Oh. Like when you're flying, because like I got a belly too. <laughs> yeah. So when you're flying, I don't have to wear a belt with those things. Oh, uh, I'm out comfy. on belt. I got and, a Nike. They, yeah, go ahead. But they sorry. look dressy. So it's like, oh, oh yeah, really? I'm that guy. Yeah, no, See, True Links, man. Their shoes are too. Their 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 shoes are amazing. And their keep talking now. up True Links because if yeah. we can say True Links <laughs> enough, maybe True Links will say yeah, they're, they're hey, local. I, know, they I know some of the dudes. They used yeah. to do Imperial Motion. I mean, like they're out of Gig Harbor. I mean, like help us out here, guys. Now, yeah, I, um, I love a good stretchy sweatpant, man. That is, oh. it's just whoever. Would you agree with me? We can talk about some of the greatest um discoveries inventions in the 20th century right you know mm -hmm. electricity whatever whoever made the stretchy pant oh and the stretchy jeans stretchy just anything denim. just anything stretchy yeah. yes. whoever came up with that is probably the first person who did it for like the 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 lululemon jog you know uh pants yeah. for the women whoever then decided let's take it next level for the men if I could send any amount of money to that person and hug them, I, I would. I want to find and seek that person out at some point. Well, I feel like they had to figure that out because it seems like uh, body talc and like uh, and gold bond are not as healthy for you as they used to be, <laughs> which is really bad because I just immerse myself in green gold bond whenever I went on uh, the road. So maybe uh, yeah, I'm probably going to grow like a yeah. third tail or a tail or something from putting that all over my body. Okay. So can, can, well, can you air somebody out on the, on the Mariners team who should be wearing the, the, the stretchy pants? Oh, I don't know. So it's funny. My <laughs> girlfriend actually told, told me to tell Fr Ty France that he needs to get tighter pants. Cause he's lost so much weight. He looks great. Ty yeah. France looks great. I, I, when I flip on my TV, they're on route and was watching some of these games and watching some of the coverage down there. I, I'm, you know, forget driveline for a second, Divish. Forget, you know, the way he looks and just, you know, the shape he got himself in, uh, I was, I'm blown away. I mean, that that's a guy that that went into the offseason and said, screw me, I'm going to dedicate myself to getting better shape. I'd say, like, he was in bad shape, but he was a little just, I don't know. I mean, just he didn't look his his peak physical shape that he probably could. Yeah, he, he was built more like a, a run-stopping linebacker. Now he's more like a coverage linebacker, <laughs> like outside. You know, he went from, like, Byron Cox to, like, I don't know, K.J. Wright. You know, yeah, leaner, right, more right. more fluid. So no, that, I think that's as much about the swing changes is he's more flexible in his uh, hips and stomach area. Like, I guess not stomach, but hips and, like, lower half. And that's going to make as much of a difference for his hitting uh as as it is the the driveline swing changes that i do think are important as well okay before we we get into baseball stuff and again people are like when are you going to get to baseball listen if you ever listen to the radio show for god's sakes it's gonna it takes us 30 minutes to even 40 minutes 50 minutes an hour to even get in sports so uh this show here at pucksports.com and, and youtube you can just search uh, puck sports also uh there on spotify apple wherever you find your podcast uh just get used to it because it'll take a while before we actually get into it but before we circle back to uh the mariners let's just go back to being domesticated what what have you learned about yourself now that you are settled down no longer the bachelor running out on the town, hitting up Hooverville after a game. Well, I still go to the hoop sometimes, Good. but not as often. But yeah, like, yeah, well, being domesticated, you just spend money in different ways instead of spending it at the bars. Um, <laughs> I'm spending it on Lululemon clothing for people. Yes. Um, yeah, that that place I should have invested stock in that place. It's, it's the greatest thing ever. Have you seen they've got like a suit out now? Oh yeah, it's like a stretchy suit, and it's a cult. Like ugh, my my sister's kids, my girlfriend's daughter, they my girlfriend's son, they all wear it. Like they they you know, and you're, I swear to God, you know, I I used to get that stuff at like TJ Maxx for twenty bucks. Now it's like a hundred. So um, <laughs> now that's part of it. Um, I don't know. Like I, it's it's funny. Like I don't really. Oh, I know. Like. Like, are you, you watching are, you shows a, together? I mean, you're oh, doing yeah, all no, that, are, right? We've okay. done that. You're, okay. you're in for a world of hurt. Yeah. My girlfriend's daughter is 16. You're in for a world of hurt. 
oh, ever. Yeah, like just... in the mornings, I got, yeah. I'll look at her and I'll say, I'll come down because they, they get up for school, you know, yeah. my girlfriend gets up and go to work. I'll sit down there. I'll get up out of solidarity <laughs> and go down there and have coffee. But I don't like, first of all, I'm not a morning person. Like, I don't mind getting up, but I just are want you, to have coffee. What kind of person are you? Midday, late? <laughs> what are yeah, you? <laughs> so like, I don't know. I just, I, I don't, but like, I'm not excited in the morning. Like, I'll get up. And I just want to have coffee and watch the news. I don't want to speak. I don't want to talk. I don't want to think. And so like, but uh, the the daughter, Macy, she gets, she can be a little honorary because she's grouchy. So I'll just say, are we in a good mood today? No. Oh, okay. Like I'll go over here. You then. can't talk to him. You you got to, you got to read the signals. Yeah. My daughter's 14. You got to read the signals. Absolutely terrified. And, I've been and, terrified over for the last three years. Yeah, I'm scared of them. I'm, I'm scared of them because, because you don't know what you say to them. That will absolutely flip out. I'll be like, hey, Mari, can you just um, bring your lunchbox down here? Oh, I'm drunk already. Leave me alone. They'll, okay, no problem. It's like, they'll rip your face off. Oh, yeah. You know, if it comes downstairs, hey, would you mind, you know, maybe wearing a different shirt? Is there any way we can get something a little bit longer that maybe actually gets past the waistline? Is that yeah. possible? Uh, this, uh, it's what I want. Can you just leave me alone? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they don't find our humor funny either. it's not our world yeah it's just uh, you know i i just i kind of put my head down and just say okay i love you i'll i'll see you later and just kind of move yeah, on I, one of the things i found out about this life is i don't say a lot i just kind of nod yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of I'm nodding just, and agreement and just, just don't want to get into an argument with anybody. Yeah, like you just pick, you pick your comments and your battles very wisely because it can lead to three days worth of talking. I don't oh, talk yeah. ever. Like I yeah. just don't discuss anything. Okay. So you're, you're, so it's just, you've been living out of a suitcase. You got a place here anytime you want to crash in, in the basement here after a game. It's, it is yours. Uh, you can just, uh, I'll give it to you anytime you want. So we're through the off season, uh, spring training. It's a opening day. It's the season is here. Let's uh, let's get into to the team. Let's go. Let's just go to the off season. Obviously, it's not the off season that fans wanted. You know, when the, when they see this thing develop and and what happened and what the rhetoric was coming out of of the camp of what they were not going to spend on and all of that. They got a lot of arrows coming their way. Now, I would say that they for the most part under the constraints of the financial, you know, blockade put on them. I thought they did a pretty decent job, but it does bring up this question of, it seems to me that there is a disconnect, Ryan, between ownership, maybe in the front office. Do you, do you get a sense of that at all? Because you have John Stanton who comes out, I think this week on King five interviews saying, what well, I, I put no kind of restraints on anything. These are the guys that DePoto and Hollander wanted to get. And it just seems to me like, well, earlier the year in the offseason felt like there was a salary uh, restraint. Uh, I know it's a long-winded kind of point here, but what what do you think and what do you make of their offseason? Yeah, I saw some of the Stanton stuff. And it, it's like what he said, I think it's kind of, and people read into it differently, and it was word salad at a lot of times. But like to me, it's like he never – he lets them make the baseball decisions. Like he never says, Oh, well, I think we need a pitcher. You know, he right. doesn't do any of that. That's where he's at. But he still has the over it's, it's him and Chris Larson are the overarching determinants of all financial aspects of it, as well as, as Katie Griggs, the business side president, they set the budget and they tell Jerry, well, you got to work within it. So it's like, yeah, he doesn't tell Jerry what baseball moves to make per se and what they can do what they want, but they can only do it within the parameters. It's like, it's like giving your son, you know, you know, twenty dollars to go to the concession stand at the Mariners game to get whatever you want, which might not get you anything, but like mm. you tell them what you can get, you know, and that's what you can get. You're not choosing, you're not gonna say, Hey, don't get the cotton candy, even though you'll puke it up. You know, you just say, Go get what you want. Here's your, you got 20 bucks. That's all you can spend. That's what th that's what Stanton gave to them. So he never told them what to do with the money, but he limited the money. I mean, like. You know, I have, you know, and he has admitted as much. Yeah, well, we had to readjust. You know, he doesn't necessarily admit everything on record, but like they said, they, we had to readjust our projections based on the root sports thing and some other aspects and taking on, you know, the production route, the production side of the, the, the network. So now I, I, I don't know if there's necessarily a disconnect in the sense of like they don't, I just think that 
the front office was expecting one thing at the end of the season, mm -hmm. the, the Comcast stuff happened and some of the other stuff happened and they're like, okay, we're, we don't have this. But it just, I, I guess I, I wonder from, um, from DePoto's standpoint and Hollander's standpoint, again, uh, you're listening to Ryan Divish. He's with me. It's puck, uh, pucksports.com. If you're watching uh, on uh, pucksports.com, also on YouTube, there, a puck sports. You'll see that Ryan is not in a women's prison. It is actually the YMCA in Tacoma's people. A lot of blue hairs walking behind him. If you're listening on it, you know you can check out the video later. But uh, but trust me, he's he's doing a hell of a job of piecing this together. He's homeless. Uh, he's without a he's without a permanent residence here. As he's back in Tacoma, you're doing a hell of a job. You got a microphone that looks like a, a, a an Apple remote. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm just like, but you is, have, I'm, you I'm have made time, right now. Yeah, I, made I really time for me. Um, I but I, I guess I'd wonder, it was a lot of word salad, what Stanton said, but I, I think when he had that one sound bite where he said, listen, I, I don't tell them what to do. And in this season, th these are the moves they wanted to make talking about Evan white and Robbie Ray. And he said he loved Robbie Ray and all that. To, to me, and maybe I, I'm looking at it through different lenses because I want to see it one way or and hear it one way. It seemed to me that he was almost shifting some blame to them in, in a yeah. way into where, hey, if it doesn't work out this year, if it doesn't work out, they, you don't blame me. Don't blame the owners, but blame ah, these guys. Yeah. And I and I wonder if I'm DePoto and I wonder if I'm Hollander, you know, if I hear that stuff, do I get a little nervous at all about about this season and in terms of we don't make the playoffs or is something going to happen to us uh well they aren't under contract i mean that's an issue they don't so depoto and hollander are not under contract for next why well, I, I don't know hollanders but like I, i'm relatively certain that the um the contract that jerry depoto signed and scott service signed was a two-year with an option now we haven't got that completely confirmed but technically they would be in their third and or their final year and they would move to the option year so sidebar for those watching or excuse me for those listening ryan has moved locations at the ymca in tacoma to a wall where he can plug in uh yes. to uh to get some power because the power is probably going to run out all right so that was just for the listener so the listener viewer you've seen it all and you're following along with all the adventures okay so DePoto is, this is his, he's in the final year of his contract. Yeah. I, I mean, like, what about Scott so Service? Trying, so they got the extension after what, 21, right? Mm, sounds about right. So then 22, 23. So yeah, they would be in their the final year. And then they have the option year with the option years, essentially like a, yeah. a, a buyout rollover year. Right, I mean, right. I, you know, if they, I would, ex, I would imagine if they, you know, if they're going the rate they want to go, then they'll just extend it a couple more years. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, you know, like, I mean, I really, if they wanted to fire them, they could, you know, yeah. they're not going to take a huge financial hit because they so, won. They don't pay that guy, these guys that much anyways, comparative to the market. So do you think, do you think this is a make or break year for them? Um, it's hard to say. I mean, like, I think, yeah, I think it is because they did a lot of maneuvering. Um, and, and to be honest, some of the contracts that they had to get rid of were contracts that Jerry signed, you know, the right. Adam White deal, the Robbie Ray deal. Um, you know, you take it on Suarez money, the contract, and you took on Suarez's contract as a deal to get Winker, who didn't work out. You know, Colton Wong, they paid some money to. Like, they, there have been some bad um, – they've had some bad dollars out there that are, you know – unfavorable salaries and what they were getting rid of were, were salaries that Jerry DePoto took on. So, I mean, I, I guess they could do that. I mean, they, they could look at it, you know, I, it, this, this ownership group hasn't been that reactionary, like some, you know, mm -hmm. there's some people can sit there and say, well, these guys let people stay too long um, because like, you know, Stanton and Chris Larson, the main owners were part of the minority owner group back in the day with, with Howard Lincoln and Nintendo, and you could argue that they kept Jackson Renzik on too long. They kept Bill Bavese on too long, you know, some of those things too. So I don't know. They're not reactionary, but, you know, this is a group that's been here since before, you know, 2016 season, you know, they've got one playoff, one playoff appearance and, you know, there's been some, 
there's been some certainly downfalls along the way, you know, from perception, um, some off the field stuff, you know, the stuff with uh, Lorraine and Martin, all that other stuff, you know, it hasn't been, it hasn't, hasn't been, been clean. No, it hasn't been gumdrops and rainbows. No, do I think they're a better organization in terms of baseball wise than they were five years ago? Absolutely. I think they're in a better spot than when DePoto took over a while ago in terms of the players, you know, they don't necessarily have the money that they had when he took over, but yeah, I think they're in a better spot. Do you think it, it appears to me again, excuse me, I'm getting choked up just watching at the Y. Um, <laughs> does it does it appear to you, you know, that this offseason got off to such a bad start, the whole 54%. And again, th there are different ways to look at the 54%. And I know you're tired of dealing with it because you got to deal with all the fans that, that tweet you and, and get after you on social media about it. I think you can look at a couple of ways. I think from an, a baseball industry insider, you, because we talked to Jim Duquette, who's, who's with us uh, every week uh, from MLB.com, uh, or excuse me, MLB Network Radio. And, and Jim said, hey, it, throughout the industry, it makes sense what he's saying. Over the course of a, you know, a time, you win this amount of games, you're going to put yourself in position uh, to be mm -hmm. in the postseason. But the way he expressed it, it just it is never going to satisfy fans. When fans hear that, wait a minute, your goal is just to win over fifty percent of your games. That that's not what fans want to hear. You can think that and you can believe that, but it's a different thing, right? To articulate what he articulated. It seemed to me that after he made that, that they did something, whether he did it personally or somebody did it for him, that they really reined him back in. Because I, there was not a lot of interviews, not a lot of FaceTime, not a lot of airtime for Jerry Depoto, and you know him. You've been covering him since he's been there. I mean, he likes he likes to hear himself talk. He likes to be out there, and they really seemed to kind of pull him back. You think that was an organizational thing? That was maybe just Jerry self reflecting and saying, maybe I need to pull myself back a little bit. Huh, that's that's an interesting question. You're you're right too. Like. Um, like the, the 54% thing makes sense. If you're telling me and Daniel Kramer and some beat writers at a mid season thing, and you're telling them that, but it's when you're saying that it's the timing of when he said it and how he said it. And I mean, there, there is a level, I think sometimes Jerry can come off sounding a little condescending because he's smart, you know, or at least he believes he's smart. I think he's pretty smart. And the yeah. way he said it can be off putting. Like he, if he says that to me and Daniel and Shannon as an overall goal, and we're sitting at spring training one day and we're just BSing, he talks about that. Yeah, that makes sense because you want sustained success for 10 years. I mean, like that's the one thing is like the, the idea of 54% is, is that likely in eight of those 10 years at 54%, you're winning more than 60% right. of your games and that you're going to be there because we've seen 88 wins usually get you into the postseason. So I get it. It makes all the sense in the world. It's just the time and place. You don't say it then. You don't say it there. And you don't really necessarily, like, honestly, he swung at a pitch in the dirt. Like, yeah. Levine asked the question. He's literally videoing himself asking the question and has it written down because, like, hey, I'm going to prove a point. Like, but it's a good, the, I, but I, you know, I, but I, you know, I commend, I liked it. I mean, it, it got, oh, yeah. it got him to say something that I think, yeah, because like that's that angered thing, a lot, yeah. ended up yeah, angering he, a lot of people. I think it's because it, like one, he went after it because he wanted to like prove his point to somebody I don't think he necessarily cares for. And so yeah. then it was like, it's a pitch in the dirt. Like it's a yeah. no win to answer it the way he did, yeah. you know, in a reflection, I think. And do I think they pulled him back? I think, I think it was probably a little bit of him and the Mariners saying, Hey, look, let's pull back because honestly it like for, and even now it exists like, no matter what he says, the 54% and all that stuff comes back to bite him. It's not, I wouldn't say he's, he's like nuclear or toxic, but it's just like nothing really good comes from him being out there that publicly. Now, like, you know, when he wants to just talk about straight team and, and like uh, transactions and stuff and why they like a player and why they decide to get a player. Yeah. I think that's good. But when he's out there discussing his 10,000 foot view or, you know, the, the philosophy of the organization, it just, it doesn't matter what he says. This, this negative connotation around him is swirling from fans and he's not going to get that back unless they win.
Yeah. And, and I think too, you know, he's got a guy um, who, you know, we used to refer to on the radio show as Tonto. Cause they were just, I don't know how we came up with the nickname. Tonto. Oh, Jeez. <laughs> but we did. Brutal. I just, it was, well, I, it just was, you know, he, that was somebody, I think it was a caller. It was a listener. It was on, on our, on our, on, on our voicemails that came up with it, but I like Hollander and I've always liked, you know, when we've we had the few times to, to talk to Justin Hollander, I, I enjoyed it. And he is so much, you know, he's so much better at it. He's so much better at getting in front of a camera or a microphone and just talking about the team. He's going to, his message is going to be the same. I just think he does, he just does a better job of articulating what the organization is trying to get across. And I think it's a smart move. I would put him out there. I mean, he is the GM and DePoto is just the president of baseball operations. So, I mean, I know Jerry's still pulling the strings and I'm, Hollander definitely has a, a, a say, but I would just put him out there as much as I possibly could if I were the Mariners. Yeah, no, I, I mean, like, well, you guys think it's better fans because, like, he does, you know, he's a lot more guarded in what he says. He's careful in what he says. For us, that sucks. I like, I mean, Jerry filled it up. No, you're right. right. It's you're like right. I asked three, I asked three questions, and it's like fifty pages of quotes that I can yeah. use down the road because, yeah. like, that's one thing too. Is like Jerry just tells you what he's thinking. And he tells you a lot of times, oh, well, we're looking for this, and this is what we want, and this is what we need. So, in that regard, yeah. But like from a uh, public, from a public persona perspective, yeah, I can see what the Mariners are doing. And just as great, you know, I like him. Yeah. Um, he handles all the contract stuff, and he knows. And like, you know, I think a lot of the work that is done now is done by Justin and Jerry. She's more of the big picture and finalizing yeah. it. And so, um, no, it's I, I think it's better for him to be out there more. But like, if, if I really want to know about what the overall arching thought process is for the Mariners, I still want um, um, to talk to Jerry. But yeah. you know, I understand why they're not putting him out there because, like I said, it just does no good for him to be out there right now because the reaction will always be negative. I mean, he could go out there and you know, unless he goes out there and says, "Hey, we're we're signing so and so, and we we've got more money, and we're going to do this, this, and this," you know it's just going to be negative. And there's a believability factor too, because he was so adamant, you know, we're going to increase payroll. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And when it doesn't happen, you know, all this stuff's on the internet and people are going to remind you of it. Uh, Ryan Divish is uh, with me. It's a uh, puck puck sports.com. Uh, of course, uh, Ryan Divish covering the Mariners uh, for the Seattle times, Seattle times.com. Go check it all out. Follow him on Twitter at Ryan uh, Divish. Uh, you can, of course, uh, listen to this uh, anywhere. You can watch this uh, on uh, YouTube. Just search Puck Sports. Uh, visit PuckSports.com on the website and also uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts and wherever you get uh, your podcast. So we uh, we appreciate uh, Ryan stopping by here in our opening day extravaganza shows. The Mariners will open up the 2024 season against the uh, the Boston Red Sox. Let, let's get into, before we get into the offseason moves, uh, the injuries, boy, the injuries just seem kind of they're they're piling up with the with the pitchers. We know what the situation with Santos, uh, Matt Brash, uh, Wu, Jackson Kowar. Let's let's just start with an update on Matt Brash. What is what is the latest on him, and do you think that he will be coming back fully healthy, ready to go for the twenty four campaign? Uh, yeah, so Brash is thrown off the mound, not at a hundred percent effort, but throwing. You know, 25, 30 pitches, they're all fastballs too. Um, I think, you know, all signs are pointing that he's going to come back. I, You know, look, he's going to have, you know, eventually down the road, there's going to be an elbow issue because of how he throws and right. how hard he throws and how many pitches he throws that bend. Um, are I they everybody... avoiding, Ryan, are they avoiding the inevitable, you think? Um, I think that, no, I think that they felt like it wasn't, like they, if you look at, to what they said, the MRI never really was any different. You know, they said the results, they never said it was clean. They just said it didn't look any different than before. So I think that they felt like he could pitch, you know, similar to last year. So, you know, I don't think they're avoiding it. I mean, you don't want to cut it if it's not torn, you know, on some level. I mean, there's always tearing, but I, I think, you know, they feel like they can do it for a while and maybe they feel like this is the window, but, you know, they didn't do anything crazy, like do the PRP shot and everything like that. They just, Felt like, hey, you know, if we do this, it's okay. Um, but they're they're being very cautious in how they build him up. So, I mean, I I, I think if he if he has no hiccups, um, he could be back on the mound maybe by May first for the mm -hmm. Mariners. That would be the earliest I think we'd see him. 
There's okay. no setbacks. All right. So where where are we at with Santos then? Because I mean, obviously, he, we thought he's going to be a big part of this thing, and and now yeah. he's obviously he was delayed from the get go, right? I mean, that was a, something that well, even coming he was in the delayed, spring training. and then he was delayed. He threw a bullpen the day before, like workouts, and felt something, and then they shut him down. He did all the rehab. Then he came back, was building up, and then felt something again. Um, in a different spot. And so like he hasn't picked up a ball yet. He's having his MRI tomorrow. And if that is clean, which they expect, then he would start throwing, he would start throw, playing catch and building up again. So again, like you're talking, it's March 27th, you know, four weeks again to build up, do all the playing catch, the bullpens, you know, the progression that they have. So you're talking mid May 1st at the earliest mid May. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where he's at. I, I mean, it's not an elbow, it's a lat issue, but it's just something that, you know, I just hasn't kind of come back. But they're going to make sure, like, they're not going to have this rush thing with him either. They're going to make sure that he's ready to go. No, he's going to be a big piece of the team. What about what about Brian Wu? I mean, again, this is a something that you, you knew you were going to hopefully depend on him this year and uh, certainly excited about what he did last year, but uh, now elbow inflammation. How What is kind of the word around uh, the Mariners circles about potentially how long this can keep him out? So like when, when, when Brash got hurt and within Mariner circles and, you know, outside the organization, everybody thought he was done because that's, it's just, you know, that's a, that's a bullet that's speeding at him that, you know, it's right. unavoidable, but it wasn't, you know, they were, they felt like they got lucky with Wu there. You know, if you listen to Hollander talk, he said there was no structural damage. There was the graft from the UCL surgery before was clean. So that's, you know, you want to hear that. They said it's similar to the elbow inflammation he had last year, which I think is just fatigue and usage. Um, I think with with Wu, too, like he wasn't going to pitch. He wasn't going to make 30 starts. Right. There, there was no way. He was going to make maybe 25, maybe 22. So, like, there was going to be a downtime anyways. This is a downtime. Obviously, you don't want it to be an injury, but I think it's just inflammation. And they said it's similar to what he felt last year when they shut him down. So, you know, they feel like he'll be ready to go in maybe two or three weeks and be back to normal. And they mm -hmm. have Emerson Hancock, you know, able to step in. And, you know, he's not just some random quad A guy. They, he is a guy that does have some potential. So, I mean, that it's like I wrote yesterday, the Mariners have injuries and they're dealing with injuries. But, like, there is, I think, something like 13 teams that will have projected starting pitchers start the season on the injured list. The Astros will have two. Um, Justin Verlander and Jose Arquiti. The Rangers will have three of their best starting pitchers also there. There's a guy yeah. singing down the hallway. Is here. there a guy singing? What is he singing? Uh, again, if for those who are listening to the to the podcast here at PuckSports.com or Apple or Spotify, Ryan is doing uh, today's show from uh, the YMCA uh, there in uh, Tacoma. What was he singing? Did you I thought, well, I am at a YMCA, so it's probably Christian hymns, but I'm not <laughs> certain. Are you going to get in a run? Are we Are we going to play a little little five on five, a little four on four? What do we got? So um, a couple of years ago, I stepped on Isaiah Thomas's foot playing a pickup ball. I bet that and was good. Shred it. Yeah, and retore my meniscus for the fourth uh... time, like, la like horizontally. So yeah. I'm not supposed to be playing. I played twice down in Arizona and good for you. I, yeah. Some of my, my boys, Akita and my buddy, Brian have started to play hoops again. So good. I'll probably play. Never this. give it up, man. I play an no, old I, man, I, fat man league every Monday. Never I give mean, it up. I, you know, when this, when this puck sports network breaks big and you get sponsored <laughs> by an orthopedic surgeon, I can oh, just we will. get like a, my knee replacement done. Yes. You know, well, if, if there is a company out there that's watching and listening and you like to, to get in on the advertising, uh, contact us there at pucksports.com. We'd, we'd love, we will take, I will take any and all advertisers. I don't care who you are, everybody to come in and support this, uh, this new venture. All right. Of the off season moves. Like I, when I look at it kind of in a vacuum and I separate the money and, and everything, you know, I look at the players and I look at that projected lineup and there's no doubt. I mean, you can be as glass half empty as you want to be. And and obviously I can be that way as a Mariners fan because I'm a Mariners fan. I'm a Cougar fan. So I am used to being disappointed in, in all walks of life. So, but I look at it like a JP, Julio, Polanco, Garver, Cal, Mitch, Canzone, France, Rojas. And I say, not bad. I mean, it's, it's better. I mean, it's longer. It has the potential to be better. Uh, but there well, also not, there also are a lot of what ifs to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, they're not, you know, but it's not like 
take they're not starting a utility guy and saying hey we're going to see if he can be a real guy like True. they did with Dylan Moore or they're not taking Shed Long after 30 games and just handing him the second baseman job and like you know it's not even Jared Kelnick who's a top prospect and never done anything say hey we're going to hand this to you every one of these players had seasons of three war or higher I think other than maybe Rayleigh and Canzone because they just haven't played as long but mm -hmm. like they're you know you look at them they're still a combined track record I mean like I just think it's a better overall lineup like these guys have proven that they can play at the major league level consistently for a year now they they're not all like all-stars but I, I mean like you saw the lineup they rolled out that first night in san diego that's that's as good of a big league lineup yeah that i've covered since probably 2016 maybe you know you know it's and it's not as top heavy like even those the teams with Seager, Cano, and Cruz, it was those three guys and then not a lot of help around them. I think if you if they like again, we get back to the what ifs. And and the what ifs, you know, if they can stay healthy. If you look at a bottom of the lineup, which, you know, at any level of baseball, right? The weaker hitter is going to be at the bottom. And if you can go where Mitch Hanniger is hitting six and then Canzone, who does show some ability to hit, and then Ty France, that we all know if he can get back to that form and and he can learn something and take whatever he can take from drive line, hitting eighth. I mean, you know, that's gonna be there's not gonna be an easy out at that bottom of the lineup if, but again, it's it's always a big if with these guys because you are talking about health with a lot of these guys. Polanco's dealt with injuries, Garver's dealt with it, Mitch has certainly dealt with it. France is off and on. We don't know what Canzone or Rojas can do with extended playing time. So there are a lot of what ifs, but of that group, and I haven't even mentioned Rayleigh yet, of that group, who who are you or who do you think fans will be most excited about? Or who is the chance to have a breakout season? Well, I mean, like, I think watching Hanniger this spring, he's done some stuff differently with his swing. It's shorter. Like, you remember, like, Nelson Cruz, how he flirted with 300 that year? Like, yeah. I'm not saying Mitch is going to be a 300 hitter, but he's not the 230 guy that was we saw kind of in the last year. He's just a better overall hitter. He's not going to strike out as much. He has a better understanding of who he is. He's not afraid to hit in T-Mobile Park. He understands that. I just think he's – I think you if you get 120 games out of him or, you know, Scott mentioned 140. Take it now. Yeah, you, but like, that's the thing. Like, if you go look at, the at like, the track record or the back of the baseball card any look at the numbers that jorge polanco mitch garver and mitch hanniger produced when they had 500 plus plate appearances mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. kicker if you get 500 yeah. plus the quantity of those plate appearances leads to quality because those guys have done it i mean and that's the difference that's a separator so i think he's pretty good i mean polanco is really good he's really just kind of a, like you watch him hit he has an understanding of what he's trying to do and he's a switch hitter and those two guys are really good. And like nobody's seen Garver play more than not. He's played like 102 games. This is all in his career. Like this is this. I can't believe nobody else thought of this a long time ago. Just let him hit. Right. Like, right. You know, just do this. So how much uh, do you think Hanniger will be out in right field? Do you think it's the majority of the time or, or how much are they going to have to massage that based on trying to keep him healthy? Cause I mean, clearly it's not like he's a terrible defender, but his value is hitting. And how much yeah. do you do you do you juggle that also with juggling the situation there with Garver? Yeah, I think you know, like the days that Hanniger sits, you might not play him. You might not play him at all. Like you sit him to get real rest, and then you bring him in for a pinch hit roll late or something yeah. like that. Like you know, if it's if they're facing a tough righty that's you know just death to righties, then that's the day you put Canzone and Rayleigh out there, and then you can yeah. always bring Hanniger in. So I, I think. They have better options. It's, it's funny. It's like when you sit a guy and you bring a guy off the bench to play, again, you're not bringing in Tommy LaStella to play or or uh, Cooper, whatever that guy's name was. You're bringing in real Cooper dudes. Cooper Hummel? That are, yeah. I mean, like, you're bringing in real dudes. I mean, like, yeah. I, I like Cooper Hummel and stuff. Yeah. But, like, you're bringing in, you know, like, on the days you're giving rest, you're putting Luke Rayleigh and Dominic Kenz on. Sure. If you're giving Hanager a day off, you know, they, you know, they, like, they had to play – you remember the one year they had to play Jerry Kelnick against yeah. lefties because they were so bad defensively otherwise, and they didn't have anybody else. Like, it's oh. not like – it's different now. Um, I've kept you so long. I, I trust you. When we do this in the future, it's never going to be this long. But you, we we have – we it's been years since we've been able to catch, uh, yeah. catch up in this type of platform. So I, I yeah. needed to – I needed to sprinkle in your life. Everyone needs to find out what, what's going <laughs> on with you. The, uh, the pitching staff uh, – is there a better pitching staff starters? in in baseball than this group or i mean you might you might mention one or two but 
this is as good as it gets in Major League Baseball, this group. Yeah, I mean, like, they're top four or five. I mean, like, I, you know, you can argue the Dodgers win completely healthy when Walker Buehler gets back, yeah. you know, all that, but they're not completely healthy now. Um, Cleveland's got some injuries, too. I, I mean, like, their top three are as good as it gets. And mm-hmm. then their fourth guy, Bryce Miller, I mean, like, he seems to really just keep evolving as a pitcher. And then if Wu's your fifth guy, I mean, like, that's a pretty good number five. You know, like, you know, like, think of some of the number five stars the Mariners have, like Chris Flex and some of these other guys. Like, Brian Wu's a legit guy, you know. So it's, I think it's, I think it's the top three. I know it's one of the top two in the American League. I can't think of, you know, somebody might argue Cleveland, you know, right now, Houston staff isn't healthy. Mm -hmm. So you don't have our kitty in, you know, Verlander. So I, 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 I have no problem saying that they're top two in the American League and top five in Major League Baseball. Well, it gets underway uh, opening day on, on Thursday. They have a seven-game homestand, features both the Red Sox and I think the the Guardians. Mm-hmm. Uh, if healthy, when, if fully healthy, optimistic? Optimistic about this team and what they can do? I mean, obviously, we know what the pitching, if they can stay healthy, they're, they're going to be great. Offensively, they did enough. Do you think this uh, will be a team, once again, that will flirt with the playoffs and have a, a legitimate shot to get in? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy because, like, when I – when they were dumping salary and like, I love Suarez. He was such a good dude to be around and like having, I, I always kind of cheer for Jared because, you know, he is a, I was just like him. I was a helmet breaker, you know, my mm-hmm. broke my hand punching a dugout wall. I mean, like that um, surprises me with you. I, I don't see yeah. that level of anger. Yeah. So <laughs> um, I, I thought they were going to be terrible, you know, yeah. and then I really thought they would have to trade some of the pitching. So they kept the pitching um and you know there's all the moves they made were smart you know like yeah there's injuries but there's injuries with everybody right you know so it's like i like the team i like how what i saw this spring in terms of like guys being better with two strikes and i'm gonna strike out as much you know your your old co-host hated that i mean they're a lot more competitive with two strikes and like I, I wrote about this today. You need to paper. emphasize old when you talk about Jim. Oh, I know. I Just know. really, really decrepit. emphasize how You're, old, decrepit, and you know, yeah. and just you know, curmudgeon like. All right. Well, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe like I just don't like sorry guys. Well, I don't know. I could be wrong, <laughs> but I mean, I, maybe I am wrong. I'm probably wrong, but no, I, don't know. I just, I just hate watching that. That's a pretty good. You did a pretty good impression of Jim right there. <laughs> you pretty much I mean, nailed like, it. I, I, I'm, I'm. St- but I'm just, I, I'm just doing this for the money. I mean, like, you know, I'm trying aren't to Aren't we all, like a, aren't we know. all doing this for the money? I'm actually not doing it for the money right now, yeah, but no, aren't we all? Uh, well, I, um, I think, I think it's gonna be a fun season. I, I think it's, I think that's the thing with baseball, right? In, yeah. in probably any sport, but maybe because just I mean, the nature of this one, I'm, I'm optimistic every year. I know some people are going to listen to that go, no, you're not. I am yeah. deep down. I'm always optimistic. And then, well, like, and then they usually crush my soul. Kid. You're around yeah. your kid and he makes you optimistic you know like my girlfriend's son loves the mariners now too yeah. I and mean, like you're around like they get excited yeah here's the thing if they get i've said it like if they get 1600 to 1700 plate appearances combined from garver hanager and polanco they can win 90 games they yeah. can easily win 90 games because that's you're talking that's going to be you know those three war level production if not more if they you know and like they, they can't they can't have Kirby or Gilbert or Castillo miss significant. Right. Time. Sure. You know, but they they can offset the bullpen stuff. You can piece the bullpen together for a while. They've done that. But if they get that kind of production, so I've said they're 88 to 90. Like I can see how they can get to 90 to 91 wins and even win the division because like the other teams are banged up too. But I can also see if guys get hurt, you know, they're out. They, you know, and everybody says, well, they don't have depth. Well, I don't name me a team that really has depth. Yeah. Because like no old guys are signing to be depth. You right. know, like it's right. got to be prospects. Their prospects are a little younger. And, you know, like I, I loved watching Cole Young and Colt Emerson in the spring, but like they're ways away. But like I think I can see the road to 90, 91 wins and I can see a road to 85 wins. And mm-hmm. then it's like, but what they've done and it's like the old Tony Bennett god just horrible to watch basketball that was effective by having really good pitching they're always going to be in it sure. you know what i mean like yeah. if you have if you're if you're star, i mean like what they like they led the league in quality starts or second most if you get that many quality starts you can win ugly a lot you know and yeah. i did like the quiet I, the maturity from julio that i saw this spring and just kind of the like they these guys all work there's just like this motivation to do 
and get better. And I was pretty impressed. Like I, like I'm you, like, I don't really care if they win or lose. I cheer for outs and qu- quick games and the pitch clock. But like, like I've seen like when it's right and when it's working, they the way they want it to, yeah. what they want it to look like. It's pretty effective. Now it's just a matter of what, how long, how often are they going to be able to roll out the group that it's going to be right in 162 games. Ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, Ryan Divish from the Seattle Times covering the Mariners. It has been about, I don't know, 10 years since we've been able to do this in this type of platform. And uh, I am so uh, grateful that that he's back. He'll be back with us on this new venture, PuckSports.com, uh, which you can uh, go to the website. All that material will be up there, video, audio, also on YouTube. If you just want to search it that way, Puck Sports, a new new Twitter handle, Puck. 2040 uh you can go there is that Apple. a new weight loss system 2040 <laughs> you know what now that you <laughs> i didn't even think about that no i had to change i'll tell you the meaning behind it. i had to change it i started uh i started a company a media company so it's oh. 20 my media company name is 2040 media or 2040 media llc Kemp, so you'll Kevin Peyton. Kemp there you Peyton. yeah, Peyton and Kemp. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty obvious. Yeah. So um, and boy, I'll tell you what, trying to change your Twitter handle is a is a process. And I don't know why. And it I is. did it so much I, I got locked out for like 10 hours and it was miserable. Um Probably but you get 10 hours actually, but you know. Well, no, not when you're trying to launch something new and you don't think it's going to come back on. You're like, well, I kind of <laughs> need that. Th- I kind of need the Twitter handle. I need Twitter to be there so I can pump all this stuff out. Uh, but you can find uh, Apple, Spotify, just search by Puck Sports. Uh, we'll put out uh, new stuff all the time. This was a special opening day show. We're going to do kind of what they say in the restaurant business, a soft launch. The big launch will be uh, next week. You're going to hear uh, from all the regulars that you liked uh, on the radio show. Uh, Jim Duquette, MLB Network Radio. John Canzano, johncanzano.com. He's coming over. Uh, Mike Garofolo, NFL Network. He's coming over. Uh, Rob Staten from Seahawks Draft Blog, who I love Rob to death covering the Seahawks. Uh, he's coming over as well. Brad Adam from Root Sports. Bill Kruger from Root Sports. And then uh, as we did on the radio show, finishing every week with uh, Mr. Sunshine, uh, Chris Egan, Chris Egan from King five news will be coming over uh, as well. And I'm pretty sure the old man will be riding along pretty soon here. Oh, yeah. uh, when we, when we can uh, else, finish some details, he, what else does he have to do? Uh, I mean, well, I think there's some, I think there's, at a golf course. I think there's gotta be some issues we got to figure out, but I think uh, he will be along uh, for the ride. Ryan, appreciate the time. We will, we will talk next week. Thank you, sir. All right. Sounds good, man. There is a uh, Ryan Divish. And again, follow all of the content, pucksports.com, YouTube, Puck Sports. Apple and Spotify. Thank you so much for everybody for tuning in. Like, subscribe, all of it. I and money, send money. Okay, advertises. We will. I'll pitch anything uh, for you. But please visit PuckSports.com.